It was a quiet night in the small town of Greystone, nestled deep within the Appalachian Mountains. The air was thick with the humidity of late summer, and the faint chirp of crickets echoed through the dense woods surrounding the town. Most of the residents were fast asleep, save for one, Jenna Lawson. Jenna, a restless insomniac, often found herself wandering the open fields just outside of her home. Tonight, the sky was clearer than usual, stars scattered like diamonds across a velvet backdrop. The beauty of it all helped soothe her racing thoughts, if only for a moment. As she stood in the field, staring up into the vast night sky, something peculiar caught her attention. A star, or what she thought was a star, began to move, slowly at first, then more erratically. Jenna squinted, unsure if her tired eyes were playing tricks on her. The object zigzagged across the sky before coming to a sudden stop, directly above her. Her breath caught in her throat. The air around her felt different now, heavier, almost electric. As she stared in disbelief, the object began to descend. It was no longer just a small speck of light, it had grown larger, looming above like a great silent predator. The object was a ship, large, metallic, and eerily silent. No hum of engines, no sound of air being displaced, just a cold, unnatural stillness. Jenna tried to move, to scream, but her body refused to obey. She felt a strange force pulling at her, lifting her off the ground. Panic surged through her as she was drawn upwards toward the ship, her legs flailing helplessly. Her mind raced. She had heard the stories, the whispers of UFO sightings in the mountains, the tales of people disappearing without a trace. But those were just myths, right? Stories told around campfires to scare kids. And yet here she was, helplessly floating towards an alien craft. As Jenna was pulled into the ship, the world around her went dark. The last thing she remembered before losing consciousness, was the sight of the ground growing distant, and the suffocating sense of isolation. When she awoke, Jenna found herself lying on a cold, metal table in a stark, sterile room. The air smelled sharp, like ozone after a lightning strike. The walls, made of smooth, featureless metal, gleamed under harsh white lights. She tried to move, but her body was restrained by invisible forces, her arms and legs locked in place. She wasn't alone. Figures loomed over her, tall and slender, with elongated limbs and large, oval-shaped eyes. Their skin was a sickly grey, almost translucent, and they moved with a disturbing fluidity. Jenna's heart pounded in her chest as she stared into the abyss of their unblinking eyes. They seemed to communicate silently, their thoughts passing between them in ways she could not comprehend. One of the beings approached her, holding a device that pulsed with a faint blue light. Jenna struggled, but her body remained paralyzed. The creature lowered the device towards her head, and a sharp, piercing pain shot through her skull. She wanted to scream, but no sound escaped her lips. Images began to flood her mind, horrible, distorted visions of planets unknown, civilizations rising and falling, strange beings conducting experiments on humans, manipulating their DNA. She saw people, ordinary people like her, being taken aboard these ships, experimented on, then returned to Earth with no memory of what had happened. The images shifted, showing her the future, a world overrun by these beings, humanity enslaved, their bodies harvested for purposes she could not fully understand. It was a future so bleak and terrifying that Jenna felt her mind begin to unravel. Then, without warning, the pain stopped. The beings stepped back, their task apparently complete. Jenna's body was released from its restraints, and she collapsed onto the table, gasping for breath. Her mind was a whirlwind of confusion and terror. The beings said nothing, but she could feel their presence in her thoughts, probing, observing. They weren't done with her yet. 
Jenna wasn't sure how long she had been on the ship. Time seemed meaningless in this place. Days, maybe weeks, passed in a haze of confusion and pain. The beings continued their experiments, subjecting her to tests that pushed the limits of her sanity. They extracted memories, implanted thoughts, and manipulated her body in ways that defied explanation. At times, they would show her glimpses of her life before, the warm embrace of sunlight, the laughter of friends, the scent of freshly cut grass. But it was all a cruel illusion. She knew she would never return to that life. She was trapped, a prisoner in the cold, sterile confines of the ship, her fate in the hands of beings she could not understand. But the worst part was the silence. The ship was unnervingly quiet, devoid of any sound or movement other than the soft hum of the lights and the occasional rustle of the beings as they moved about their work. Jenna longed for the sound of a human voice, for any sign that she wasn't completely alone in this nightmare. But there was nothing. Then, one day, without warning, it ended. Jenna woke on the ground, back in the field where it had all begun. The ship was gone, the sky above her clear and calm once again. For a moment, she thought it had all been a dream, some horrific nightmare brought on by exhaustion. But the pain in her head, the strange marks on her body, told her otherwise. She stood shakily, her legs weak beneath her. The world felt different now, brighter, louder, more chaotic. She stumbled towards her house, her mind racing with questions. How long had she been gone? What had they done to her? As she reached her front door, Jenna paused, a strange feeling washing over her. She looked up at the sky, half expecting to see the ship hovering above, watching her. But the sky was empty. For now? She entered her house, but nothing felt the same. Her memories were fragmented, pieces missing, things that didn't quite fit. She tried to resume her life, but the dreams wouldn't stop. Every night, she was back on that ship, the beings watching, probing, waiting. And then, one night, she awoke to find a small, glowing device embedded under her skin. They had left a part of themselves inside her. Jenna knew, deep down, that they weren't done with her. They were watching, waiting, planning. She was no longer just Jenna Lawson, she was something else, something. Changed. And one day, they would come back for her. The sky had never been so silent. Now, in the darkness of her room, Jenna stares out at the night sky, waiting for the inevitable return of the ship. Every night, she wonders when the light will come, when she will be lifted into the air once again. Because she knows, deep in her bones, that this time, they won't let her come back.